In this Blender tutorial, you will learn the steps to create an exterior lighting setup using Cycles, as well as a post-processing using Photoshop. You can download the project files and support the channel on my Patreon. So I have created a very simple model for this tutorial. All plants are free assets from Maxtree. If you want to learn more about distributing vegetation and how to set up its shaders, you should watch my dedicated tutorial. There is a link in the upper corner. Let's add a camera and an empty object and link the camera to the empty object. Now place the camera, trying to find a nice way to show the relation between the pool and the house. The composition is a vital step in the rendering creation. Even if the light and the materials are not the best quality, a good composition can save your image. Looking at real pictures of architectural photography is great inspiration for this step. This shot looks promising, so let's start the lighting setup. First, I'm setting up cycles. 16 samples for the viewport is enough quality and very fast to work with. For the final render, I will set up 128 samples, which is enough for daytime exterior images, as we don't have many light bounces in the scene. Now, before creating the lighting, let's create an override white material, so our original materials are not distracting. This is the default lighting. I will increase the strength so we can see what we are doing because I have to exclude the glass from the white override. For this, you will have to go to Object tab, then Relations and set the Path Index to 1. Now go back to the override material. I will create a mix shader. Create a simple glass material and connect it to the mix shader. Create an object info node and a math node set to compare. Connect the object index, which is the pass index, to the first inlet. Change the other value to 1, which is the pass index we set for the glass object. Connect the outlet to the factor inlet and make sure to set the pass index to 1 for each object. Let's create a second exclude for the water. It's the same process, but you will need to create a chain of mixed shaders. Once we are done with the overall material, let's set this value back to 1. I will turn off this interior light for the moment. Create a sky texture knob here. And now a mixed shader. Let's connect it to the light path node because I want to remove the visible sky so we can really focus only on the lighting. I'm now ready to play with the rotation and elevation of the sun until I find an interesting lighting. Next, I will control the overall exposure here. I will also lower the intensity of the sun so we can have less contrast between sunlight and shadows. There is a technique that I really like to find the range of correct exposure values, which is using three objects with different shades black, grey and white. Watch me quickly create exclude for these objects. Ok, now let me explain how to use this. Zero is the default value. Using these values clearly show us very washed out black and grey tones and the white has lost almost all detail. So I know that I need to decrease exposure until all of these objects looks balanced. There is no correct exposure value, but I could say there is a correct range of values. For this scene, the correct range seems to be around negative 2 and negative 3. Only after deciding my exposure value, I proceed to create an environment texture to add the background sky. Let's use this sky from Polyheaven. The default value of this sky seems off for this scene, so I will increase its strength. You really should look at pictures to understand which is a credible exposure value for a blue sky. The strength looks correct, but this will usually mess up the saturation, so we need to add it back. I will also like to shift the hue a little bit, but we will work on this better in post-production. With this nose, I will rotate the sky and find a nice position. I'm happy with this result. I will turn on the interior light so we don't have such a black square in the center of the image. 
this looks ready to add materials, so I will remove the override material. Ok, but let's say you want to light your scene using an HDR. I will cover that as well. Let's find an interesting one on Polyheaven. I'm turning on the material override again and I will create a new environment texture and load the HDR. This looks promising. With this nose I will rotate it until I find something nice. This looks good, but maybe I should remove one of these trees casting so much shadows on the facade. I will bring back our spheres to set up the exposure value correctly. You may notice how the grey ball looks almost black, so we know we should increase the exposure value. This looks better. I remove the material override once again and I notice that the scene looks a little bit dark. This is normal and you will fix it by just adjusting the exposure value again. Anyway, I will stick with the first lighting setup and maybe raise the air value here so we can have some warmer tones. I won't be covering the shaders creation in this tutorial as most of them were created in my other tutorials, check them out, but I will show you how to create the water for the pool now. Let me remove this modifier and start from scratch. First, you will have to create a plane for the water. I'm deleting the material as well. Once you have your plane, you will add an ocean modifier and suddenly the plane will be much bigger, so you need to scale it. Once this is done, set a smaller scale for the modifier. Select shallow water here for more correct waves and also you can increase the resolution for better quality. Now let's set up the material. Set transmission to 1, the roughness to 0 and this value to 1.33. Also, let's fade the color here for something blue. This is looking nice already, but you may notice there is no light going through the water. I will use a mix shader with a light path node and the transparent node so all the light goes through. And that's it, let's render this image and save it as a PNG of 16 bits. Open the image in Photoshop and first convert it to a small filter. This will allow further corrections to the camera raw setup. I will start by lowering the strength of the highlights and the whites to reduce the burnout. Then I can increase the contrast and exposure a little bit to balance. For this image, it will look great to enhance the vibrance but reduce the saturation. Vibrance is just the saturation of the middle tones. So we are basically reducing the saturation of only brightest and darkest parts of the image. I will also add a vignette as it really makes the center of the image pop. The color mixer is a powerful tool. I will change the hue of the sky to make it more cyan, but I will need to decrease the saturation so it doesn't look fake. I will also shift the hue of the wood material and now we can see the before and after. If you want to modify something, double click here and you will find all your settings. I'm thinking about adding a person to the image, so we can find something useful on this site. Let's bring the person into the scene and convert it to a smart filter. Place it and scale it. I will use AI to generate a reflection on the water. They are not the best yet, but they are quick and useful anyway. Finally, I will make the opposite side of the sun position darker to add some more integration. And that's it, this is the final image. Please let me know your thoughts and any questions you may have. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, please like, subscribe and visit my Patreon. I will be uploading much more content soon. Thanks for watching.